Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video, I have prepared for you test results of 8 different Xeon E5 V4 CPUs. Uh, these results I'm going to compare towards E5 2697 V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock and AMD Ryzen 5 5600. So, from the Xeon E5 V4 CPUs, I have got E5 2697A V4, E5 2690V4, E5 2687W V4, E5 2680V4, E5 2667V4, E5 2643V4, E5 1650V4, and finally E5 2630V4. If you're interested to see detailed tech specification of all these CPUs, then please put the video on pause and study my slide. I will mention that E5-2687WV4 is an interesting 12-core CPU. Of course, with hyper-threading we have 24 threads, and according to the specification, it's supposed to keep clock frequency between 3 and 3.5 GHz. Unfortunately, this CPU refuses to work with my Huanan Zhi X99TF motherboard, or the other way around, X99TF refuses to work with the E52687WV4. And that's why I had to test this CPU with Machinis X99 MR9A, and maybe this motherboard is to be blamed for the clock frequency of E52687WV4. Running Cinebench R23 test with E52687WV4 in single core or multi core mode, the clock frequency stays at about 3.2 GHz. It's pretty weird because I would expect that under single core mode the clock frequency would go up to 3.4 or even 3.5 GHz, but it is what it is. Another interesting pair to compare is E5-2643V4 against E5-1650V4. These two CPUs are almost identical, but E5-2643V4 has 20 MB of cache, while 1650 has only 15 MB of cache. So it will be interesting to see if these extra 5 MB of cache will help E5-2643V4 to provide better performance, especially in games. Finally, E5-2630V4 is some sort of a joke CPU, because it has very low clock frequency of just 2.2 to 3.1 GHz. Nevertheless, the CPU has 10 cores and 20 threads, and right now you can buy it for just 5 euros. Because of its very low price tag, I decided to buy it and test it to see what you can expect from this 5 euro CPU. A few important notes before I go into the test results. All the CPUs were tested with hyper-threading enabled, so one physical core has two logical threads. Then I have also applied in Spectre to disable Spectre and Meltdown patches for Xeon E5 CPUs. These patches may potentially decrease Xeon E5 performance. And of course, all the CPUs were tested with a resizable bar and AMD anti-lag enabled. E5-2630V4 and E5-2697V3 are limited to DDR4-2133, and that's what I have used to test these CPUs. The timings were set to CL12. All other Xeon CPUs were tested with the DDR4-2400, CL14, but I used exactly the same four memory modules, 8GB each. Ryzen 5 5600 was tested with the two Corsair 16GB sticks DDR4-3600. This Corsair memory kit is one of the cheapest possible, so I believe it is somehow a fair comparison. Finally, performance of Ryzen 5 5600 might be slightly improved if I enable a PBO in the BIOS or if I would use a B550 motherboard that supports PCI Express 4.0 for the graphics card. To start, let's take a look at the Cinebench R23 performance. Here we don't see anything spectacular and the results are pretty much as expected. From the notes I can say that E5-2643V4 is slightly faster than E5-1650. E5-2630V4, when using all CPU cores, is faster than E5-2643V4. After all, we are comparing 10 cores against 6 cores. And Ryzen 5 5600 with fast 6 cores is able to match 12 core E5 2687WV4 and 14 core E5 2680V4. E5 2697V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock looks very good compared to the much more expensive V4 alternatives. 
In Cinebench 2024 we see basically the same picture, but overall scores are much lower because it's a newer version of Cinebench. It's worth noting that Ryzen 5 5600 here is not able to match E52687WV4 and E52680V4. I don't know what the difference between R23 and 2024 version of Cinebench, but in 2024 6 cores of Ryzen 5 are not enough to catch up with the 12 and 14 core Xeons. Geekbench 6 is a very interesting benchmark because it verifies a CPU performance under many different circumstances. So basically we have a set of micro benchmarks combined into one big benchmark called Geekbench 6. Here Ryzen 5 5600 beats all the other tested Xeons. Even if i 2697 v 3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock is not able to catch up with the Ryzen 5. If i 2630 v 4 is not able to match faster clocked if i 2643 and if i 1650 v4, even though it has 4 additional CPU cores. Because I had to test from scratch 10 different CPUs, I did not have capacity for more than this. I have tested only 3 synthetic benchmarks and 5 games. And with this, let's go into the first game. The first tested game is Assassin's Creed Mirage, and here E52680 V4 falls behind the main V4 pack because it has slightly lower clock speed compared to the other CPUs. E52640 V4 is once again faster than E51650 V4 because it has more cache. Even though E52630 V4 is kinda slow, it still delivers highly playable 9151 FPS, and this is almost enough to catch up with the E51650 V4. E52697 V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock and Ryzen 5 5600 are beating all other tested Xeon V4s, and that's kinda expected. The next tested game is Far Cry 6.5. Oh, sorry, I meant Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. This is a pretty weird game with pathetic optimization. Here, somehow, all the CPUs deliver almost identical results. But minimal FPS is somehow the worst with the Ryzen 5 5600. I have no clue what's going on here, but in general Far Cry series is known for its very bad optimization, so it is what it is. Alan Wake 2 is a very GPU demanding game, but it is also noted towards the CPUs. So E52680 V4 again falls behind the main pack of the other V4 Xeons. E52630 V4 is even slower than that, but it still delivers highly playable 5686 FPS. E52697 V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock and Ryzen 5 5600 are taking the second and the first place just as expected. F1 2023 is a fast-paced racing game with pretty good optimization. Here E52643 V4 is almost able to catch up with the main V4 pack. On the other hand, E51650 V4 is slow as here. The 15 MB cache buffer is simply not enough for this game. Even E52630 V4 was slightly faster than E51650. It renders 168-227 FPS. It's probably boring to hear, but E52697 V3 and Ryzen 5 5600 are yet again taking the lead. The last tested game is Counter-Strike 2. This is a fast-paced shooter where you want to have as much FPS as possible. Unfortunately, the game does not have a built-in benchmark, that's why I had to play 3 matches 10 minutes each with each of the CPUs. For the test, I use Rust to map and even though I try to have kind of the same playstyle in every match, it is still not guaranteed to be identical from match to match. Looking at the FPS numbers, E52680 V4 is yet again falling behind the main pack. E51650 V4 is significantly slower than E52643 V4. Here we have 168 against 205 FPS, so the gap is rather big. And E52630 V4 can't even reach E51650 level, but still highly playable 7952 FPS. Ryzen 5 5600 is out of competition here. Of course, it is a much better gaming CPU, and here it is much faster than any other test at Xeon. So, these are the test results I have got. Pretty interesting, huh? Well, because I have tested only 5 games and each of the games are rather unique compared to the other games, I'm not going to show one average slide with average FPS, but these results are good enough for you to make your decision and make your conclusion of what CPU you want to buy. 
As always, it depends on how much each of the CPUs cost at the time when you are planning to buy, how much money you have to spare, and what games you are planning to play. If you ask me to pick one or two of these V4 Xeons, then I would say that right now if i2690 V4 with a price tag of about 50-55 euros makes the most sense. It seems to be the most balanced and the most viable option. My second pick would be if i2630 V4. It could be a very good stopgap because it costs just 5 euros. And you can use the CPU until you really need to upgrade because your CPU is holding up your GPU or until you got enough money to buy a better Xeon. Of course, if i2680 V4 is also a viable alternative. It is just slightly slower than if i2690 V4, but it costs only 2025 euros. Still, in my opinion, if you can spend 2025 euros for the CPU, you can increase the budget and just buy if i2690 V4. The good old if i2697 V3 is another option not to forget. Of course, you need to modify BIOS to enable Turbo Boost Unlock, and the yes, if i2697 V3 consumes a significantly more power, but if these two things do not scare you off, then overall gaming performance with if i2697 V3 will be better than any other test of the Xeon in this video. About Ryzen 5 5600 I can't really say much. It is obviously the best gaming CPU, it is also the most power efficient, and I like it the most. But at the same time, only one Ryzen 5 5600 costs somewhere about the same as X99 motherboard, Xeon i5 CPU, and memory from AliExpress. So if you have budget and you have desire to spend this budget, then of course I recommend Ryzen 5. Otherwise, you need to look for some other alternatives. And with this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, and I hope it was useful. Bye for now.